Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my June wrap up. I can't believe I'm already wrapping up another month. I feel like I just wrapped up the month of May. But anyways, I read six books in June, which for me was kind of disappointing only because I fell into a book slump in the last few weeks of June and I was going to read 10 books and I just didn't get to it. So now they're pushed back to July. Um, but a lot of them are Pride Month wrecks. So like, I mean, it, it I can read Pride books whenever, but I really wanted to read them in the month of June to dedicate my reading solely to Pride books. Um, but anyway, I read six books and a lot of them are great and I'm going to talk about them and share what I liked about them. So let's get started into the video. Okay, so the first book I picked up in the month of June, I actually read in the entire day on June 1st, and it is Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Frazier. This cover is just absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my like favorite covers. It has very retro vibe, very comic-y comic book art. Um, and I actually got this from the publisher last summer and I was planning on reading it. I got it around Pride Month as well, and I was gonna read it because I was just very intrigued by it. It sounds a lot like my favorite book, Days of Distraction by Alexandra Chang. It's kind of just like a portrait of this women woman who is navigating her life um, but this story basically follows an 18 year old pregnant pizza girl and she feels kind of stuck in her life um, with her mom with the recent death of her father and her very doting boyfriend um, and that changes when she makes a pizza delivery order to this I think this mom her name is Jenny and she kind of becomes infatuated with her and therefore starts this kind of like relationship relationship um, but it's like kind of all in her head and it's basically exploring this relationship between these two women in different stages of their life and also the main character's own relationship with herself and her identity. Um, overall it was kind of like a meh read for me. I feel like I pushed through it because I wanted to like finish it because it's such a short book like why would I just DNF it but I was very close to DNFing it. What's super interesting is that I thought that I didn't like this book for reasons why people don't like my favorite book of all time Days of Distraction because a lot of critical like comments of that is just like nothing happened in that book it was very slow moving and that's kind of exactly how I felt for this book but I think just the writing style did not mesh with me because in Days of Distraction the writing style is actually quite unique and it kept me going whereas for this one I felt like I wasn't really invested in the characters or the story itself so I kind of was like meh but I mean I would definitely give this a read I really like the queer rep in this book and kind of like the struggling to come to terms with like identity um, after exper experiencing like grief and all of that um, so yeah this was the first book I read in June so the next book I read in June is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This book is was highly recommended. I bought it solely because of the hype and I really like the premise of this book. I actually didn't know that there was a magical realism aspect, which there is by the way. It, it's not a spoiler, it is in the synopsis. Um, but because I didn't read the synopsis and because it kind of caught me off guard, I actually think I enjoyed the story more because it was kind of like a new twist and surprise. So this essentially follows our main character named August and she's kind of this cynical, character who's, who feels very stuck in her life as well. She's just moving to New York City. Um, she's trying to find like her purpose, like, you know, self-discovery, whatever. Um, but she meets this gorgeous girl on the subway and her life kind of changes after that. And there is a magical realism aspect. I would highly recommend not reading the synopsis and jumping into this book knowing that there is a romance that happens. I love this book. I think it was like a love letter to New York City. It brought me back and it just teaches it like I'm from New York City. So like there are a lot of parts that I don't like about it. But this book really reminded me of all the really great things about the city and about like the culture and the community. Um, yeah, I would highly recommend this book. I know a lot of you have read it already already. I've seen uh, so many posts about it on Bookstagram and the tubes. So yeah, this is one of my favorite books of this month. So the next book I read in June is Reign of the Fallen by Sarah Glenn Marsh. This is actually a reread for me. I read this in like 2015. I think my name is actually in the back of the book. I blurbed it, the arc at least. And you know what's funny is I read this book, reread it at least for the sole purpose of jumping straight into the second book. And like I didn't even get into this. I didn't even read the second book. So like what was it all for um, but I definitely think this is a great book to reread because it was just so good that I like loved rereading it again I thoroughly enjoyed my experience um, this world is kind of interesting it's hard to like explain because there's so many rules but basically the story takes place in a world that is kind of um, 
like these necromancers are like the king's highest soldiers or whatever or his most like valued people um, because in this world the necromancers revive the ruling people to keep them in rule and keep them in power um, but obviously if you play with fire you're gonna get burned so there are consequences to raising the dead which our main character who is like the main necromancer in this book realizes and she kind of comes to terms with that and tries to reevaluate her purpose and role in this society um overall the reason why i love this book is mainly because of the romance but also it is no shortage of action and like intense scenes really angsty things it's kind of gory like i didn't realize why a book could be this gory um but it's a quality why fantasy book that touches upon it has queer rep it has a bisexual main character um, and overall it's just a book that I love to pieces and recommend every year so the next book I read in June is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This is another book that I knew I was going to enjoy off the get-go because everyone really loves this book and I saw it being posted a lot. It was like highly recommended on all of those pride recommendations but our main character is black, queer, and trans and basically essentially the story is that he just wants to like find, he wants to fall in love and he wants a happily ever after and that all kind of goes downhill. He has to deal with a lot of things. Um, I think essentially this book like the strong points of this book is just it's just filled with emotion and it's filled with such realistic um, ideas and thoughts that help you kind of understand what it's like to live in his shoes I guess um, my favorite part of this book was that there was just the main character constantly questioning his identity and I think that's just so beautiful I've never really seen that in a book where a character is constantly kind of questioning their identity and it's like on the page questioning their identity so I really enjoyed this book I think it was definitely had a great conversations really great writing I love like the found family aspect or like the relationships that the character had with all the different side characters it was a very vibrant book um, and I would highly recommend this if you're looking for a book to read Okay, time to talk about one of my favorite books of this month. It is Don't Hate the Player by Alexis Ned. This book is so surprising to me. It is definitely like an underrated read of like the year. It actually just came out in June, um, but basically I read this book because my dad brought it home for me and told me to read it and my parents don't really have a stake in like the book. I don't even think they know that I do book YouTube, but when my dad tells me to read something, I immediately read it because it has to be good. Um, so I read this immediately and I absolutely loved it. Um, it basically follows our two main characters who are featured on the cover and it's in dual POV and they are basically in the beginning of the story we know that they're like childhood friends who met when they were younger and then it switches back to like modern day which is when they're like older um, and they're both gamers and they actually are on competing competing sides of this like national competition for this video game this computer game and they're on different teams like the competing teams fighting for one grand prize um, I really love that aspect it was kind of like enemies to lovers but also friends to lovers because they were childhood friends um, and overall this romance was so good. I have such a weakness for books about like esports, virtual reality, gaming, only because I used to play games a lot so it's kind of like nostalgic for me. Um, I really liked especially how this book talked about uh, sexism in gaming which I have read my fair share of books with gaming featuring girl, featuring like female gamers and they don't really touch upon that aspect as much as you would think they do but this book really focuses on our main character who is like this girl gamer who's in who who has the spotlight on her um so yeah overall i love this book so much i think the author is so good at writing like writing about gaming like basically it's like an esports competition so these people are like playing on their computers but the author knows how to write people playing on their computers and knows how to make it interesting so i highly recommend this book it's one of my favorites of this month and i know it's definitely one of my favorite like gaming books of all time now um but yeah highly highly recommend this one and lastly, in the month of June, I read Sisters of the Snake by Serena and Sasha Nanua. I am really, like, I'm, I feel bad for this book because, like, I read it when I was in a terrible book slump, but I kept pushing myself to read it. So I actually just finished it, and overall, it was, like, a quality YA fantasy read. I gave it a four to five stars, and it was just quality. Like, in character development, in this lush, rich world building, there was a lot of rules in this world and a lot of rich history that the author authors drew on to inform this modern world that our characters live in. Um, this book follows two twin sisters, and they are separated 
separated at birth. One is an orphan, one is a princess, and they meet later in life and they kind of decide to switch their roles. And it's very interesting if you have ever seen, if you've ever seen the Barbie movie Princess and the Pauper. I swear I was like singing the entire soundtrack through reading this book. That is very similar to this, or at least this book is very similar to that, and it's very nostalgic. It reminds me a lot of that, and I really love reading books about twin sisters because I am a twin. Um, so the rep was great in this book. Also, some of my favorite parts were definitely the relationship between the two sisters because it wasn't like it wasn't just like sugar coated like twins are like twins are very complicated I know from experience and I liked how this touched upon their rocky relationship but also the genuine love that they have for each other and the protectiveness that they have for each other um, so I really like this book I would definitely recommend it it is quite long so it, I like I said it took me two weeks to get through it um, but overall a quality fantasy read if you're looking for like a very I would say it's a very unique take on like the YA genre I don't think I read many books like this so I would recommend this. Okay, so that was all of the books that I read for June. I'm happy that I'm finishing this video as it is beginning to pour. You can probably hear the rain in the background. Um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what books you read for Pride Month, if you read any, and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.